Welcome to 20 Days in the Zone, a full playthrough of the main questline of Stalker Gamma. This was released recently as a multiple episode series, but I figured I could tighten everything a bit, give it a bit more rhythm, and turn it into the first movie on this channel. So if you missed the previous episodes, you can watch the full story here in one go. Enjoy! I did not pick Duty and decided to play Loners, always been my favorite drama-free faction. We pick hardest difficulties of course, because pain is part of the experience. I picked a .45 gun, a good all-rounder, some armor, basic food and medicine, and off we went. I decided to start in Rostock, as it's a central area of the map, and makes moving around much easier. There's also a lot of people I'll be able to get missions from. I quickly checked that hardcore AI aim was turned on, because regular pain is not enough. We want extra pain, and I ran straight to the arena to make some easy money. I hadn't played Stalker in a long time, so starting in the arena without any warm-up was probably a bad idea. But I murdered the first guy so fast, I got an instant boost in confidence. And these were the easiest thousand rebels I ever made. I went back to it immediately. This second guy proved to be a little bit tougher and made me run around, but I still got him without taking any damage. I got my money and decided to do one last one. Getting easy money is really addicting, but I realized that I had to fight two guys now. I'm whiffing this, and I don't have ammo, fuck. After some messy fighting and almost getting outplayed, I decided that it was enough for now. I equipped my starting gear and went to talk to everyone, picking up all the loot laying around. I then picked all the missions that looked easy. My plan was to go to Garbage to meet Butcher, as he's giving very good mission early game, so anything I could get in the area was my priority. On my way there, some other stalker generously did my first mission for me and I even got some extra loot out of it. We were off to a good start. I was looking at all the flickering in the trees and wondered if I should go tinker a little bit with my graphics, but I decided I was too lazy to do anything right now. I was welcomed in garbage by some radiation, so I drank a sip of water to cool things down and decided to start by picking up the stuff I could find lying around. I wanted to touch this anomaly because I was not too familiar with it, for science, and of course I took some damage. What's this sound? I then heard some weird noises, I was expecting to get jumped by something, but nothing happened. I got my first skill level because I'm really good at running around apparently, and then I got my first missions from Butcher. There was some crazy stuff happening outside, and I was glad I had a roof over my head. While I was checking where to go, another group of stalkers did my mission again. The, the zone was being very generous today, so I decided to go murder these guys for Petrenko. There was only one poor guy here, and his juicy back was turned to me, so I decided to go stubby stubby and try my knife skills. Jesus. It was very effective. I got a shotgun in very bad condition from him, eh, it might still be useful. I decided to go investigate all these gunshots I could hear. Turns out there was someone on the way I could try my new shotgun on. How did he survive this? What the fuck? It didn't really go as expected, but I got a new shotgun in a little bit better condition out of it, so it's still progress, I guess. Turns out all these gunshots were just a rookie using some zombies as target practice. I looted his dead friend and decided to go back to Rostock. I had a lot of missions to give back. I outplayed a very angry boar on the way, then tried to loot it without becoming anomaly soup just like him. I gave back all my missions. Money, money, money! 
I was apparently getting very popular already among the duty boys, which is always nice. I went to finish my last mission. Anomalies proved really helpful again, but I had to be careful when looting. Let's not get fried like these poor doggies. I thought I still had a bolt in my hand, but I threw a grenade. I didn't even try to run away because I thought I was far away from the blast. I definitely was not. Our first and very dumb death. This time I removed the grenade from my inventory, we don't want any more explosive mishaps, and I finished the mission. I decided to leave my shotguns and all the loot I don't need right now in this box. We'll deal with it later. There was not a lot of new missions available, but at least one was in Yentar and I already had a package to deliver there, so it was time to visit the nerds. I'm gonna get destroyed if I try to go through wild territory, so... Yeah, le let's just get the shortcut through garbage. I found a gun on the way that made my guy very happy, but I had no ammo for it. The scope could be useful though, so it was a pretty nice find. Radiation was kicking my ass, so I had to get out of here. I had a cigarette to help with radiation, because if it was night right now, I would be glowing in the dark. And just like that, we were in Yentar. First, I delivered the package for my first mission here. One of the rewards was Nemiro Vodka, which reminded me that this guy has pretty good deals in exchange for vodka, and I always forget about him. After reading all his offers, I realized that if I have a hard time finding basic tools, I can get them very easily with him. That's good to know. I loaded the stash with the documents I had to find as quick as I can. There's no way I'm sticking around here longer than I need to. I paid a visit to Sakharov and asked him to build me the Psy Helmet, the good kind. It cost me almost all the money I had so far, but it's something I'm gonna have to pay for at some point anyway, so better do it right now. There was not much else for me to do here, so I looted around what I could find and then I left back for garbage. The weather was getting dark, but it was actually still pretty early on that first day, and I had some murdering to do. I bought some ammo, a hunter's kit to have more loot when I skin a mutant, and a better knife. I was officially poor now. We had to make back that money somehow. I was only half-life, my weapon in very bad condition could jam at any moment, and my target will be waiting for me right on the other side. Pretty much just another day in the zone. If this shitty weapon doesn't jam on me, we should be fine. I actually got rid of these guys pretty easily, and I was hoping to see the notification that my mission was complete. But no, actually my target moved far away in the meantime. This guy was hanging out real close to the military checkpoint, a very dangerous place. Well, I guess we can do some missions here. I mean, we're in cordon, so why not? I wasn't feeling like dealing with a pack of dogs right now, so I crossed the anomaly, hoping maybe to find an artifact, but my detector remained silent. It started raining, so I went to the farm. Nobody was here, but I found a maxim on the ground, which was perfect. I can read some quality content and organize my inventory in peace while the storm passes. I spent some time around the fire with my new friend Yonka, having some drinks and waiting for my health to recover. The rain was here to stay, so I kept going, killed the dirty little camper at the bridge and moved forward. I killed my first pseudo dogs, my first snork, and my first zombies. And all I got was a lousy pair of boots. I arrived into Rookie Village without any other issues and talked to everyone. 
I started the main quest line by seeing Sidorovich, and I decided to do a couple missions while I was here. I was in my hometown after all, so the least I could do is help a little bit. I now had a couple companions with me to help with the next missions. We started by killing some bandits. As you can see, they were such bad shooters, it made me check if the hardcore AIM was on. Yeah, it's on. These guys are so bad. And just like that, I finished the mission I came for. I stashed some of my loot at the village, I started hip quest line, I looted a little bit the houses, and I listened to some sweet tunes. <sighs> I lit a fire inside to heal a little bit and I checked what I had to do. Kill some mutants, rescue some block, play in an <sighs> anomaly, and more mutants murdering. The usual stalker 9 to 5 job. I didn't want to use any of my ammo, so I let my boys take care of the mutants. It was only one sad doggy. Then we went straight to the hostage situation. I checked if I had a grenade with me, as all the bandits would probably be sitting around the fire. But unfortunately I had nothing, so a proper gunfight it would be. After almost dying, I rescued the stalker. They left him just like that under the rain. Such heartless bandits. Only one mission left before having to visit the anomaly. I cleaned a bit my inventory and noticed the rain stopped, which was nice. I think rains deteriorate a bit your weapons, but I'm not completely sure. Anyways, we only had to kill a couple zombies, so I let my guys do the work. All the ammo I could save was welcome. I gave back all the missions I did, happy to see I was getting good rewards and a lot of reputation. And now it was time to play in the anomaly. Fanatic gave me some vodka and a container, and now was time to pick up the artifact in the anomaly. I did this mission so many times, I didn't need to use bolt to find a safe way and navigate the anomaly. I knew not to pick up the bread like a rookie too. I took much more radiation than I expected though. The vodka that Fanatic gave me wasn't doing much, so I had to use one of my precious anti-rad medicine. It saved me, but I was in really bad shape, so I had some food, water, and spent some time next to a fire, just to rest. It's very slow to heal that way, but it's free. While Fanatic was showing me his new levitation uh. magic trick, I decided to field strip some weapons. They were in too bad condition to be sold or repaired, because they didn't have barrels in good condition, so even disassembling them was useless. I didn't have a tool to do it anyway. My best bet was simply to field strip them and sell the parts for whatever money I could get from them. I was getting bored waiting to heal, so I went to pick up the loot I left before, stripped everything that I didn't need, and decided to get the Taz as my secondary weapon for now. It's a legendary rifle in the zone, and even in poor condition, I'm sure I could put it to good use. After healing almost completely, I decided to do one last mission for Fanatic and actually finish the task I had in Meadow for Sidorovich that I completely forgot about. Fanatic sent me to find a secret stash first, but it was really easy to find, and the reward was as disappointing as his stash hiding skills. The sun was getting low and you don't want to be out at night, so I had to be quick now. I quickly got rid of the zombies for my first mission. I was thinking that I never checked how much ammo I had left for my pistol, which could be an important information. After getting rid of them, I rushed to Meadow because the sun was getting low. I found a dragon eye on the way, and then I realized I was running in the wrong direction. When I arrived in Meadows, I was happy to see that he was fellow loners in the area. I will loot all these houses later, right now the mission was the priority. 
I knew this place can be very dangerous, and of course a poltergeist was hanging out not far from here. I looked around quietly for the body I was supposed to find, finally found it behind the hangar and did not overstay my welcome. I decided to check the store on my way back, which was a good thing because it had some good goodies. And now it was time to loot the houses. There was very little, but I guess little is still better than nothing. On my way back I heard some gunshots, so of course I went to investigate. There was no scraps for me to pick up sadly. While I was giving back missions, I received a message for a lost package in garbage. We'll investigate this later. I got my money and sold some PDA information. And just like that we were done with the first day, just as the night was setting. Perfect timing. I was not sleepy enough yet, so I had some drinks around the fire to put me in the mood and then I went to bed. I woke up and looked at how beautiful and green the zone was. I just updated my game and spring was here. I stashed some of my loot, went to that TFC Dorovich to buy some overpriced ammo, I wish I could craft some but I didn't have what, what's needed right now, and I started the trip to see the dock to continue the questline. So I was heading to my least favorite place of the zone, the freaking swamps. I didn't have any drinks with me and I was getting pretty thirsty. You could see the negative effects of it pretty easily as just walking around was draining my stamina. I was hoping to find something in these houses but I didn't find anything. My health was slowly but steadily dropping. There was no way I could cross the whole map and make it to the dock like that so I decided to restock at the clear sky base. With some luck, I found some water at the old church on my way there, just enough to survive to my destination. I bought some water at the trader, the cheap kind of course, and rested at the campfire to heal a bit, wondering if I should do some mission for the guys around here. After a lot of thinking, because I really hate this place, I decided that if I was here, I could do a couple mission at least, as they would probably be on my way anyways. So I signed up for a couple simple jobs and went on my way. I could hear a lot of gunshots from the bandits I was supposed to kill at the pump station. If they were shooting mutants, that could be a good opportunity to take them by surprise. This is not gonna end well. But turns out everything went chaotic very quickly. The whole situation was a mess and I wasn't sure what to do. Oh come on, Nightbox, give me a break. And of course an emission hit in the middle of all that. I hightailed to a shelter and waited for the storm to pass. It got very foggy, so I decided to try again, getting close as much as I could before engaging. But I got spotted really quickly though, so I decided to rush it. <laughs> Fuck it, let's try to rush these guys. I got clapped so hard I decided to change my plans. Maybe the professor in the church could give me a mission to escort some scientists? That would give me some free companions I could use to do my other missions. It didn't really go according to plan and I ended up with no companions and even more missions to do. I hate this place so much. I was getting a little bit desperate, not sure what to do, and I met a patrol of sneaky freedom boys. I decided to stick with them for a bit and see what happens. Mishenka Ventilator, Liova Telegraphist and Vlad Shingachkuk? There's almost two racial slurs in that name. <laughs> if they were as good as their name, I was definitely in good company. I quickly realized that these guys were mostly chilling though and not doing much, so I went on my way. Alone in the zone once again. I arrived at the machine yard, it's generally a military hotspot so I was being very careful, but turns out nobody was here so I just looted the place. Oh, 
I really need to find a weapon that stops jamming on me. I killed the mutants for my mission and got my first belt, which was exciting. I couldn't equip it yet, but it will be useful later. I arrived at the dock without any issues, looted the place, kept progressing the main quest and waited by the fire for my radiation to go away. And now was time to try to get rid of these bandits again. Let's go slowly. But even with sneaking, I couldn't get close without getting lit like a Christmas tree. So I decided to give up with these guys for now. Come here, bitch. I showed my ninja skills to a dumb flesh. Got rid of a couple boars, went back to the clear sky base to get my rewards, and decided to get back to Cordon. I will come back for these missions when I have better gear, I'm not freaking in anomalies and fighting bandits half naked with a pea shooter. Speaking of bandits, I stumbled upon a group of them on my way back, but decided I didn't want anything to do with them. Don't shoot me, don't shoot me, I wasn't here. See ya. Back in Cordon, I realized that I got a stash reward, but it was in the stash I was already using to store my stuff, so I had no idea what I got. An emission hit of course in the middle of me ordering my loot. I went to hide underground, and Hip went to flex her shiny detector in front of me. I wish I had one right now, because artifact hunting is the best just after an emission. Unfortunately, we only had a shitty detector, so it was really not worth to do anything right now. I was disassembling all the items I could to save on some weight, waiting for the emission to pass. That's when I realized that I had guns missing tools. That's probably the reward I got in the stash. That's nice. I sold some stuff to Sidorovich, knowing perfectly he was giving me awful prices, but I needed to get rid of some stuff to be lighter. And then I started going back to garbage. I drank some Hercules and equipped this armor that had a little bit more of carry weight to make the trip less painful. I was hoping for the checkpoint to be clear, but no, some pesky bandits were here. After a messy fight, the way was clear. I healed and moved on to garbage. Arriving in garbage, I got the reminder of the package that was hidden somewhere northwest, so that should be around here. I had a stash to pick up along the way too. I set up my frequency to 145 and started walking there. I left all my mutant meat in the stash next to Butcher, I'll use it to do some of the missions he gives very easily. I left all my mutant parts too, I'll use them to complete the tasks some random stalker can give, and all the extra ones I have, I'll sell them directly to Butcher because he gives the best prices. I then picked up his daily hunting mission. I wasn't expecting much from my first white stash in the game, but jackpot, turns out basic tools were waiting for me in there. The stalker gods were looking after me today. Now my goal was to finish my hunting missions as soon as I could and go back to Rostock to see what I could craft. Turns out I had a Psy Sucker to kill, and I read online recently that the best way to deal with them, like Bloodsuckers, was to chase them instead of being afraid, because they wouldn't become invisible again. It seemed to be working, but he was very hard to catch and his ghosts were draining all my Psy health. This fucker is way too slippery. I was very close to death, so I ran back to safety like a little girl to regroup. I decided to try to find the package while my Psy health was recovering. Generally these missions drive me crazy, but after killing two bandits I found it pretty easily. Can you just die? I don't have that much ammo.
Oh, it's right here. <sighs> and the rewards were not bad. A lot of stuff to repair my gear and some extra loot. It was time for Sysucker round 2. It was nowhere to be seen, so I decided to clear the zombies. Turns out, I didn't have any more ammo for my guns, so it's kind of a good thing that the Sysucker wasn't here. And I had to run away like a little girl again. I went back straight to Butcher, stocked on ammo, some stuff to repair my knife before it gets to damage, and went back. I really wanted to be done with this before the night comes. Jesus Christ, get fucked. This fucker almost got me, but mission was done. The Hydroshock ammo I just bought definitely saved me. And it reminded me, I picked that gun at the very beginning just for this, so I should have got that ammo like much sooner. It's so effective against mutants, it's crazy. Anyways, I went back to Butcher again, got my reward, picked up all my loot and headed back to Rostock. I arrived back to safety just as the sun was setting. Perfect timing. I dropped my loot in my stash and went to give back all my missions. I still wasn't tired enough to sleep, so I picked up a couple of easy missions in the meantime. I got two packages to deliver in Agroprom, which was perfect. There was two stashes I could pick up there at the same time, in particular the green one that would guarantee me a set of tools. To finish my second day in the zone, I disassembled some ammo I knew I wouldn't need and used it to craft some bullets for my gun. There's no better feeling in Gamma than crafting your own ammo and having stuff for free. I also decided to get rid of my trusty shotgun as it became too damaged to repair cheaply and too unreliable to use. And I went to bed. I woke up with my limbs healed, which was perfect, I just needed to find a campfire to heal fully. I looked for one that was already lit, because I'm cheap and I didn't want to use my own matches, and I looked at the missions available while I was healing, but nothing was really talking to me, so the plan stayed the same. We were going to Agroprom. I took all my medicine, all my food, all my ammo, basically like everything that could be useful, and I left for Agroprom. I heard the screams of a lurker on my way to Agroprom, and of course he was coming straight for me. But my dodging skills were still on point. I decided to quickly do Butcher's daily hunting mission. This very nice anomaly actually did all the work for me and I found two artifacts on the way on top of it. We were making easy money. I heard some gunshots and my curiosity of course got the best out of me. I changed my ammo type as I was expecting to maybe fight stalkers and hydroshock rounds would be wasted on them. Turns out it was just freedomers killing mutants, and they were pretty protective of their kills, so I headed back to my first objective, Agroprom. My goal was pretty easy, deliver my packages, get the two stashes, maybe loot a little bit around, but nothing else, no funny business. I gave my two packages without any issues, picked up the two stashes, and avoided fighting as much as I could. The stashes were not bad, honestly, and I got a medical crafting set out of it. Radiation in the area was a nightmare though, so I stopped by the fire and had some vodka to heal a bit. The area was full of loot lying around, so I decided to take some time to pick up everything I could before going back. I then slowly went back to garbage, not too sure what to do next. I realized I never looted around the hangar, so I did that and found quite a good amount of useful stuff. There was a green stash in Dark Valley, maybe I could try to grab that. I certainly didn't have the gear to fight all the bandits in the buildings right next to it, but I could try to sneak in there. I left some of my heavy loot at the market, we might have to do some running to do and extra stamina could save our life, you never know. There was a lot of boars on the way, and I wasn't planning on fighting them, so I made a run for it. 
dropping all my heavy loot was already paying off. I kind of freaked out when I saw snorks waiting for me at the entrance of Dark Valley. But they went down pretty easily. Again, this sweet Hydroshock ammo is really OP against mutants. I wasn't planning on fighting, but if it had to happen, it would probably be against bandits now, so I switched to the full metal jacket ammo. Time to get the stash. Of course, I got spotted almost immediately, even though I was hugging the edge of the map. I wasn't sure exactly where was the stash, and of course there was radiation everywhere. But a new set of tools that I could give to the technician, and the gun that Hip was looking for, this operation was 100% worth it. The fuck's happening around here? Don't ask me how I survived this chaos, <laughs> I was out of there. Back to the relative safety of garbage, I healed and ordered a bit all my loot. I decided to leave again everything I didn't need. We were going back to Cordon to visit Hip. If I could get her as a companion that early, that would be a game changer. I had to get rid of a couple bandits on my way, but overall the trip was pretty easy. I went to see Hip full of hope, but her new task was finding 40 snork fingers? Jesus Christ. It was a bit of a cold shower. I'm not getting hip as a companion anytime soon. I picked up the stash next to the village and honestly it wasn't that bad. I then decided to do a couple of easy missions while I was here. At least I could say I didn't do the trip only to sim for hip. I killed a very dumb military guy. Then a silly bandit that never saw anything coming. I then made sure that my temporary companions were not carrying something in their inventories I could grab for myself. And then I gave back all my missions. This was a messy but pretty successful operation. We had a good amount of loot and a good chunk of money now. Time to go back to Rostock and see if we could craft something new. I knew I had to pick up all the stuff I left in garbage and I was already pretty heavy, so I stopped by to sell all my damage parts to Xenotech. I bought my first multi-tool too. I generally only use my multi-tool to disassemble weapons that are worth it, but you can try to disassemble any weapon that has this upgraded arrow too, because it has a chance to give you an upgrade kit. We didn't get anything here though. I had to clean some bandits again. Fuck it, let's do this. Knife kills are risky, but when you're low on ammo, you have nothing to lose, I guess. I clean a bit my inventory and realized I didn't have any ammo left for my gun. We'll have to use this broken shotgun now if anything comes up. And well, it didn't take long. Come on, give me a break. I guess not panicking and remaining calm when you have no stamina to jump and a broken gun can do wonders. <laughs> I don't know how I'm surviving this. I'm like the sidestepping master. I deserve that one. Get fucked, you stupid snore. <sighs> Give me your hands for hip. 
I've definitely seen better days. I was in a pretty bad shape, but I'm not giving up. We'll make it. It's gonna cost us a lot of medicine, though. I dropped all my mutants, meats and parts at my butcher stash and bought some ammo and extra sharpening stones. I had plenty already in Rostock, but now with a multi-tool and knife to repair, you never have enough of these things. While checking what time it was, I saw I had a green stash close by. Gunsmithing tools and some extra stuff. Eh, not great, not terrible. The armor was useless, but the gun was actually not in a terrible condition. I doubt I'll use it, but eh, you never know, we'll keep it for now. There was way too much stuff in my garbage stash for me to carry everything, so I had to do two trips to bring back everything to Rostock. I had an extra basic tool set now, so I gave one to the technician. That will update his inventory and he will sell me better stuff soon. I picked up all my gun parts under 60% quality as I wouldn't be able to repair them anyway and sold them for extra cash. I did some disassembling of all my junk items and crafted a workbench. I then moved all relevant crafting parts inside it to make things easier. I had two armors I kept to potentially repair. One needed a small repair kit, the other one a medium one. I had enough to craft a small one, so we could repair the first armor actually. I used the repair kit to replace some parts of the armor to improve its overall condition, and then I was able to fully repair it with the repair kits I had on hand. And just like that we had a brand new armor, a big upgrade from the previous one. I checked if I could craft some repair kits for my weapons, but no, not enough components. I checked the technician and he wasn't selling any yet, so maybe in two days when his inventory will refresh. Technically I could buy from him the components I was missing to craft a kit, but I wanted to go back to missions and pick up more potential guns to repair, so we'll see later. I repaired my gun, picked up my medicine, my food, my ammo, parts and meat I could drop at Butcher. It was late afternoon, but I still had some time to do mission before the night. So I picked up stuff not too far in garbage and cordon to do. And just before the end of our third day, I went back on the road. I could do two missions at the same time. Kill a bandit and do not kill the infiltrated stalker in the group to exfiltrate him. I played it slow, I knew the spy had a SVD. So I had to wait for them to shoot at me to identify who was who. And just like that, our first missions were done. I was running dangerously low on ammo though. I went to Butcher, got a hunting mission from him again. They are so easy money, you should do them as much as you can early game. Unfortunately, he had no more ammo to sell to me. I got all the interesting missions I could find and spent 10k at the market trader for some ammo. It's painful, I know, but I didn't have much choice right now. It was getting dark and I wasn't feeling like fighting though, so I headed up to Yentar to no deliver my packages. I still had a ton of things to do in Cordon, but it was a bit too late, so I decided to go back to Rostock for the night. I gave back all my missions, got all my rewards. It's a good thing I decided to go back, this was a very dark night and being out in the zone right now would have been a nightmare, especially because I didn't have a flashlight yet. I waited to be sleepy, drinking at the campfire, and I went to bed. I started therefore by buying a crap ton of ammo for my gun, I had a lot of fighting planned today and didn't have enough yet to craft it by myself. I then checked the perk artifacts I got so far, because some of them can be very good, but I didn't see anything that could be useful, all the ones I got were like a bit too niche. I checked my rep on my way to garbage and was pleased to see that I was making good progress. Traders will have better gear for me and I should be able to hire some companions soon. I started by doing Butcher's daily hunting mission. I was probably still sleepy because I missed a lot of my shots and this snork gave me a pretty hard time. Ooh, another hand. Nice. I realized that I should have enough snork hands for Hip's mission now. I managed to gather them much faster than I expected, which was nice. I got my reward and started moving towards Gordon. 
I still didn't have a good detector making artifact hunting worth it, but I could pick the perks artifacts lying around. I was doing my missions pretty easily, getting loot and extra experience. With the scar I found, I even had access to free healing now. It's still a very dangerous artifact to use, as it can mind control you to do crazy stuff, that's why I'm removing my gun from my hands, and as soon as you hear weird sound, you should remove it from your belt immediately, but it's still a very useful artifact to save some money on medicine early game. Just don't use it if you play Iron Man. I completed my missions, picked up the stash with the secret documents that had another set of tools in it, and went to see him. Oh, come on, what's happening? Just talk to me. She wouldn't talk to me for some reason. I thought I had enough snork hands for her, but apparently not, so we did the trip down here for nothing. I guess I celebrated too quickly. Eh, we still had some work to do then. I picked up everything I could find lying around on my way back and gave the set of tools I just found to Xenotech. I had plenty more at bay, so it was pretty much free money and free rep. There were two stashes easy to get in wild territory, so I went to pick them up. I got an AK in pretty good condition, and with the shotgun I got on a bandit earlier, these two could be potential reapers later. I went back to Rostock and tried to lure the dogs into the duty guards to save on some ammo, and got punished by friendly fire for being cheap. I gave back all my missions, and then I went to see the doc, because I was in a pretty rough state, and getting healed by him is pretty cheap. At the technician, I bought all the recipes that looked interesting, even the ones I knew I was far from being able to craft. I would have to buy them at some point anyway, so now was as good as any other time. I bought some hammers too, as they're cheap and give you the components to craft furniture when you disassemble them. I learned all the recipes and went to check if I could craft some useful stuff. I crafted a bear detector and an extra box. <laughs> I was expecting to be able to craft much more to be fair, so it was a bit disappointing. I guess we had a lot more grinding to do. I picked up some easy missions and we were back on the road. I spent the next couple hours delivering packages, finding stashes, and cleaning the zone of pesky mutants and bandits. I needed better gear to start going to more dangerous areas, so the grind had truly really started. My Psy helmet was ready, even though I didn't really need it yet, I picked it up because I was in the area. And then I found the juicy body of a dead scientist. Oh, you're not looted. Nice. While I was healing at a campfire in Agroprom, I realized I had enough rep now to hire some companions. These guys were not the most experienced, but they'll still be useful. I'm not asking for much, but what about doing something, guys? Okay, that's a bit better. I was starting to enjoy having a couple companions with me. The zone definitely feels much safer when you're not alone. And they make very good extra backpacks. It was now late afternoon, and I still had literally a laundry list of small side quests to do, so I tried to complete them as fast as I could before night. I was rushing a bit against the sun, so I was being a bit careless, costing me a lot of ammo and medicine, but I didn't want to be out at night. Sun was getting low, mutants were everywhere, but I managed to give back most of my missions, and I made it back to Rostock just as the night arrived. I got my rewards for my missions, had some drinks by the fire, and then went to bed. I started day 5 with an energy drink, 
And then I opened the package I found on the Dead Scientist the day before. It gave me a lot of expensive Hydroshock ammo that I was using for my gun, which was perfect. We were off oh. to a good start. I sold all my damage parts to the mechanic, and then I bought some items I was missing to craft a repair kit to repair one of my shotguns. With what I already had, it was much cheaper to craft it than buy it from the technician directly. I compared my different options, but I decided to go with the trusty toes, as always. Yeah, yeah, I should be able to repair this. I repaired the parts that I could, then checked the technician if he was selling the barrel and hammer I was missing. Unfortunately, he had nothing. I then decided to use my only use of my repair kit to replace the barrel. At least I would have a functioning gun, and I'll try to fix the hammer later. I went to Barkeep to sell some of my PDAs, always remove the batteries from them before selling. And now the grinding starts. I spent the day enjoying my new shotgun and doing pretty much every single easy mission I could find in the area. I was getting cocky and tried to kill a lurker with some style while jumping mid hair, but an anomaly stole my kill. Shame. I got a double kill with a single shotgun shot. Which I think is the first time it happened to me. Nice. I was getting a ton of loot. We'll see if it's useful to craft some stuff, but it was mostly useless junk. I rushed some bandits with my knife while they were reloading, as usual. And overall, I played very careless, like someone who had an unlimited amount of medicine, which was definitely not the case. But, I mean, not playing Iron Man for once is very nice. And I kept doing a ton of little missions that I'm not gonna show. I was getting some dog meat in my stash to complete a mission for Butcher, and I realized I had two extra snork hands with me. I didn't really pay attention because I didn't kill any new snorks recently, but I probably looted them on bandits I killed. I needed 40 fingers for hip, so with 8 hands, I should finally have enough. I had a package to deliver in Yentar, so I went there and ignored the complete chaos that was happening and just delivered it like a UPS delivery guy in the middle of a police shooting in America. And now, moment of truth. Where my snork hands and off for hip? Yes, yes, we had the best companion with us now. If things were not easy already, they will only get easier. Like clockwork, I arrived in Rostock while the sun was setting. I had a ton of missions to give back. I got all my rewards, then dumped all the loot I gathered during the day in one of my boxes and started ordering everything while waiting to be asleep. It was the end of day 5 and it had been a very good day. On day 6, I decided it was time to go to army warehouses. There were two green stashes waiting for me there, maybe I could find the advanced tools. It's a much riskier area with monolith and mercenary roaming around, and I certainly didn't have the gear to fight them, but I was not planning on staying too long anyway. I arrived in army warehouses, and I was immediately welcomed by a stash with a great armor. I had a good feeling about what was coming next. Hip was already hunting bandits for me too. <laughs> Look at her going, Jesus. She was already proving to be very well worth the trouble to get her. Bloodsucker Village was of course full of bloodsuckers. But in the middle of the day, with a couple friends, they're definitely less threatening. Okay, time to check the stashes. 
The first green stash had another very good armor and met crafting tools. The second one was a little bit disappointing and I got a ton of radiation on top of it. There was still two white stashes for me to check, so let's cross fingers. Yeah, bummer. Both of them were very disappointing. I was not planning on sticking around, so I went back to Rostock to drop all my loot and decide what to do next. I gave one of the med crafting kit to the dock for easy money, and then I went to do a couple easy missions. A blunt and a radio to listen to some music, this is the chillest mutant ever. I had my new detector, so I decided to look a little bit for artifact, but without any decent protection, radiation was kicking my ass, so I dropped the ID very quickly. And while looting stashes, I got the Vigilante Recycler achievement, which is very fitting for a loot goblin like myself. Free extra parts, what's not to love? I felt very generous and decided to spare a medkit to help a fellow loner. Well, technically, I'm the one who shot him because I thought he was a bandit, so... I was kinda responsible, but let's not focus on the details too much. I went back to Rostock, gave back a ton of missions for some very good rewards. I was getting rich and my rep was really good too. Time to start doing some serious stuff. I repaired my guns, crafted some ammo, crafted a headlamp that I upgraded immediately to NVGs. It was time to go to Agro Permanent Ground. I took some time around the fire, thinking about what was waiting for me down there, and then I went for it. Getting rid of the bandits on the first level was actually pretty easy with the couple grenades I saved for the occasion. And I actually got some pretty good loot out of them. Nothing I could repair yet, but nice finds nonetheless. I then gave shotguns to my boys before going deeper. I got rid of the mutants blocking the way straight away. I guess playing very aggressive paid off. I picked up the documents for my quest and I got the hell out of there. I was not planning on exploring every nook and crannies of the place, I just left by the way I came from. I picked up a couple stashes that were on my way back to Rostock, but eh, they didn't have anything really interesting. I gave back the documents I found in the underground to Barkeep to progress the questline, and then I dropped all my loot in my stash. It was time to do some housekeeping. I checked what time it was, and it was too late to go on missions now, but I decided to check if people needed some mutant parts in the area. It's a great way to make easy money, rep, and get a lot of stash coordinates. I finished the evening of day 6 by ordering all my loot and disassembling everything not needed for extra parts, and then I went to bed happy that we progressed a little bit the main questline today. I started day 7 with 268k rubbles and 111 tasks completed. Today we were gonna grind hard, even harder than before. I already had a plan for today, but first I wanted to check the stashes I had in Dark Valley, because it might change our plans if we get lucky with the loot. Unfortunately, all the stashes, including the two green ones, didn't have the advanced tools I needed. They were not bad, but eh, not just really what I was looking for. I then spent the day grinding all the missions I could find, absolutely everything. The goal was to make as much money and get as many stash coordinates as possible. I wasn't picky, I did absolutely everything. The missions I like, the missions I don't like, just, just give me money. 
And after a couple hours of pretty intense grinding, I went back to Rostock. This day went very fast and I finished it with a ton of loot and 387k rubbles and 160 tasks completed, which is, <laughs> that was pretty productive. It has been a very, very busy day. Actually, I wasn't sleepy and I didn't want to drink a ton of vodkas waiting around the fire like the other nights, so I decided to go on a night hunt mission. I would never, ever do anything like this if I was playing Iron Man, but it was the opportunity to do missions I don't do often. And look how beautiful the night is. And of course it started raining. Great, talk about moody. Well, the playstyle in Truck Cemetery is the same day or night, just get on top of trucks to be safe and shoot from there. And ideally, do not get too much radiation, that's pretty much it. Okay, I was expecting the wars and that was actually much easier than expected. I picked up the mission I had on the way back and this time I went to bed for real. I decided to start day 8 with a small experiment. I picked low and high tier mutant meat and various mutant sports from basic ones to rare ones and I went to check the prices at the traders, the prices they would buy them from me. I was pretty sure that Butcher was offering the best prices for everything as usual, but it was a big new update I was playing, so I just wanted to be sure. And after visiting Sakharov in Yentar and Librarian at the Clear Sky Base and writing down everything, yep, meat or parts, Butcher still gives the best prices for everything. So I picked all my mutant meats and parts and did a last run of missions for every stalker that was looking for something in Rostock. I was captain rep with duty and loners now anyway, so there was no real need to do more of these missions anymore. I then went to Butcher and sold him absolutely everything for a good chunk of money. And now for part 2 of the plan. I went to Sidorovich and started using all the money I made so far to buy stash coordinates from him. Because stashes are the only way to get the better tools to upgrade my gear. I bought 10 stash coordinates to get started and then I checked this gamma stash drop table. I wanted to check that the location where I was getting the stashes were actually good places with a good drop rate to have a chance to have the advanced tools. And it was the case, we were good, so I just spent <laughs> all my money. And if you ever wondered what spending 600k in stash coordinate looks like, well, it looks like this. I still kept 50k for me, just in case I needed to buy something, but overall money is not super important in Gamma. You can craft pretty much everything you need, so it's better to spend it. I was actually pretty excited, I never did that before. Okay, I guess it's time to open some stashes. I quickly went back to Rostock, dropped all my loot and crafted a new box. That's gonna be my stash loot box, where we're gonna put all the loot we find in the stashes. Because on top of hoping to get the tools I was looking for, eh, I just want to have a rough idea if it's worth it to spend so much money on that on this. And I decided that I was gonna start with army warehouses because it's a location with higher chances to get the advanced tools. Okay, crossing fingers, let's get started. Let's see if we threw more than a half a million rubbles away. Oh she already? Jesus. Well, I got the tools I was looking for at the fifth stash. I guess our plan worked pretty well. Well, I guess it's a little bit bittersweet because now we were sitting on hundreds of 
unopened stashes, so I guess we're gonna keep going a little bit just to make it worth our money. And if I could get at least one extra set of tools so I can give them to the technician, that would actually be perfect. After looting every single stash in army warehouses, I move to Yentaur, another place with good drop rates. And after cleaning up Yentaur, I still had some time before the night, so I moved to Agroprom. And the first stash there had another set of tools. Beautiful. I looted everything in Agroprom before nightfall. Back in Rostock, it was time to do some debriefing. I started my quest for advanced tool at 52 stashes, and I found a set on stash 57, 86, and 95. So an average of 15 stashes per advanced tool set. It's of course not enough data to conclude anything, but it doesn't look that the odds are too bad if you focus on the right areas with the good drop chances. So if you have a lot of money and you want to speed up your progression, it's actually not that bad of a technique, it's not that crazy to do that. And in terms of loot, I mean, looking at it, it's okay. I mean, nothing crazy, nothing unexpected. I was planning on going artifact hunting, so getting all the ecology suits is very nice. And I got a lot of other nice things, like the two medium repair kits. That was two great finds. So is it worth the money I spent? Eh, not sure, but again, money in Gamma is not that important, you cannot buy weapons of armor, so eh, just spend it, you can craft pretty much everything you need. And we're gonna be able to have some very nice upgrades from all of this when we disassemble everything. I started day 9 pretty excited, today was big makeover day. I sold all my damage parts to the technician and gave him an advanced set of tools. I then disassembled all the extra junk I had lying around, let's see what I could craft with the new tools. First thing I wanted was a brand new backpack. I didn't really care for the extra mutant parts that my hunting skit was giving me anymore. And luckily I had everything to craft the best available with advanced tools straight away. We were already a loot goblin, but like, we would be able to go extra goblin now. Next step was devices, so a better detector, better NVGs, and a better PDA. Beautiful. Then a couple more boxes to organize my loot. I then crafted an army rifle repair kit, grabbed my historical repair kit, and with both of those in my inventory, it was very easy to identify which weapons I could repair right now. And same thing with armors and the light and medium repair kit. I could put on the side straight away what I was able to repair. In terms of which weapons to repair, it was a no-brainer for me. The AK-105 is a perfect all-rounder and Petrenko sells its upgrade kit. Then a sniper to start engaging better geared enemies from far away and a better shotgun for the labs. And I had the money so I bought the upgrade kit for the AK straight away. And those who watched my previous video, my Invictus run, probably remember that I had a weird bug preventing me to switch scopes with this AK, and here it's working perfectly. Beautiful. In terms of armors, after having a quick look at everything besides the scientific suits, the scene overcoat was actually pretty stacked and very well balanced. I wasn't planning on doing anything specific yet, so a good all-rounder was my best bet. Okay. Time to repair everything now. I was lucky to have pretty much all the parts I needed already to repair the weapons, so everything went pretty smoothly. And we all know how easy armors are to repair, so there was absolutely no issues there. I then crafted all the ammo I could for my new toys and bought a little bit extra for the AK. I then sold all my extra med crafting kits to the dock and same thing with my tools for the technician. It was actually pretty good money. And now was time for upgrades. I upgraded everything I could with the kits I already had, which was actually quite a bit already. I then bought the recipes I was missing at the technician to be able to craft upgrade kits, learned them, and crafted all the upgrade kits I could, which was quite a bit again. And then I finished upgrading what I couldn't do myself directly at the technician. But it was so little, it barely cost me any money. And in the middle of crafting the upgrade kits for my armors, I got an achievement. It will make the whole process even easier. Nice. 
And just like that, we had brand new weapons, a full set of new armor, new backpack, and new devices. All upgraded to the best I could with the advanced tool I had so far. We were ready to start serious stuff now. I grabbed my ammo, medicine, food, some explosive, and headed straight to Yentor. It was time to disable the miracle machine. I then stopped by Butcher to restock on some stuff, just to be safe, and went on my way. I dropped all the extra loot I already picked on the way in a stash. We are gonna run a lot in this run, so better be as light as possible. Okay, let's do this. I already cleaned the place while looting stashes the day before, so going to the lab was pretty quiet. After fighting the tankiest of snorks ever, I healed, took some psi resistance meds, and went down. I then did what I like to do in this lab, which is pretty much ignore everybody and run. I know it's not the most entertaining thing, but it's very effective. I then activated all the levers as quick as I could, only killing mutants literally on my way. I try to avoid everybody. I then used the trick to plant an IED where I knew a burrow would spawn when I turned off the machine. The explosion didn't kill him though, but I finished him before passing out. AK, HP rounds, shots to the head. Getting rid of the controller is pretty easy. I looted the place and left. And now my boys were back with me. It was just a matter of slowly cleaning the tunnels on our way out. And now was time to deal with our first big boy. You can avoid the fight completely by running if you want to. or spend almost no ammo using all the explosive barrels lying around. I like the sound of this AK a lot though, so I just dumped a mag into him. Works well too. And you can see that I left my companions behind for this. I'd rather play it safe, because even Hip can get killed by him if she gets stuck, which is very annoying. And just like that, we were done. It was only 1 p.m. too, so I still had plenty of time to do a lot in this day. Looking at my missions, I decided to go this dumb task I took in the swamps. They were crowding my task list and I wanted to get rid of them. I picked the loot I left before the miracle run and I headed to the swamps. Wiping the floor with the bandits that gave me so much trouble on my first day in the zone was the best feeling ever. I then did the missions for the scientist, picking up all the stashes on my way because I had a lot in the area. I was looking for artifacts at the same time because, eh, well, everything was taking place in anomalies, so why not? I didn't come back empty-handed, but I didn't find anything crazy either. I was planning to wait to have at least a Veles detector to seriously start artifact hunting, as this one wouldn't be able to detect the best artifacts anyway. I of course got caught in an emission in the middle of the swamps again, but I managed to make it inside in time. 
My companions though were lagging behind and I started getting worried. You guys are way too chill about this. Can you hurry up, please? But we all made it in the end. After giving up on trying to find a hidden stash, I got ambushed by very mean doggies. But I survived. I gave back my missions here and healed by the campfire before going back to Rostock. I had plenty of medicine on me to heal faster, but I'm cheap and I was not in a hurry. I made it back to base at night, under the rain, happy to see some friendly faces. I started day number 10 with some military rations for breakfast, a meal as sad as the weather was, and decided it was time to fight the monolith incursion. A very risky task, but I had a plan. I picked my explosives and the new sniper I recently repaired. I quickly repaired the M4 I had lying around for heap too. I didn't need it to be in perfect condition, just functional enough, and I gave it to her. The nerds were fighting a chimera, so I went to help a little bit. Oh, I 100% stole that kill, but <laughs> that's free loot, right? It's a snork, not a bloodsucker, but okay, you, you do your thing, bro. I like to leave my companions here on the hill so we can get a crossfire from both sides and I always plant some explosive charges where the monolith spawns. And now it's just a matter of waiting, looking at my companion's health. I will only intervene if they need help. Turn out they didn't need my help to finish them, especially with the couple freedom soldiers that spawned two at the same time. Mission done, without firing a single bullet. And now, time to get some sweet, sweet loot. I gave back the mission. Next stop was supposed to be the Brent Scorcher, but there's no way we were doing this anytime soon. Let's quickly go back to Rostock and drop our loot. I picked up all my mutant parts and meat and other items Stalker are always looking for and went back to the army warehouses. I then spent a good chunk of the day doing countless missions for freedom, hoping to have a lot of stashes in the north. I went to tickle a bit the mercenaries to see how effective my weapons were against them and how much damage I was taking. It didn't look too bad. Maybe with some morphine, we could do something in Dead City. I went back to Rostop again to drop all my loot and realized that Hip was taking really poor care of her weapon. It was getting damaged really fast. I got healed by the dock and decided to do some simple missions to relax a bit. Nothing crazy. At the end of the day, I ordered and cleaned up all my loot, which took a good chunk of time, and looked at what we could do tomorrow. We could clean up wild territory and get all the stashes there. Maybe plan a big attack on Dead City and the Merc base too. Or simply loot the stashes in Red Forest for a chance for the expert tools. Or just make a push to Jupiter. I wanted to check if I had some upgrades in the loot I had gotten today too. It was the end of day 10 and we still had a ton of exciting things to do. Honestly, this run was just getting started. It was time to seriously progress with the main story. 
We are not playing Iron Man, we don't need to be overly prepared for every little struggle or difficult quest, we could just bang our head against a monolith wall until it breaks I guess. That being said, I wasn't sure what to do next exactly, and I didn't want to do too much thinking and too much planning, so I just decided to go artifact hunting. I repaired the topaz suit I found in one of the stashes before. Out of all the one I got, it was the most balanced one. I was planning on checking all the anomalies I could find, with nothing specific in mind, so a decent protection against a little bit of everything was my best bet. And I had everything at hand already to upgrade it, perfect. I had enough part to only craft one artifact containers, but they're not really expensive, so buying some extra ones was not an issue. And I had enough to craft an improved Freon module, which was really nice, but that's pretty much it. So I'll use some mutant pelts to get some extra protection while I work on getting better attachments. I was planning on starting my hunt for artifacts in easy areas, so I didn't need my new weapons. A shotgun and a pistol should be fine. And while picking some ammo, an emission started. Emission have a chance to make artifacts respawn, so going hunting right after one is the perfect timing. This was a sign from the zone gods that artifact hunting was the right thing for us to do right now. I decided to start with truck cemetery. I spent so much time in cordon and garbage, a change of setting is always nice. I thought about clearing the bandy camp on the way, but quickly changed my mind when I saw it was renegades holding the spot. They have pretty decent gear and I definitely don't right now. Picking stashes on the way was a much safer thing to do. I heard something suspicious. and got a growed by a controller with no warning. Good thing we had good side protection or this could have been deadly. Okay, back to artifacts. I realized I didn't take any bolts with me, which was a rookie mistake. Right now we are not doing anything risky, but they can be very useful in more dangerous anomalies. Oh well, that's an issue for future me, I guess. Well, it didn't take long for future me to eat his words, because the next anomaly we were checking was a burner one. Probably the most dangerous ones by far. I was almost happy to see there was nothing for me to get here. I checked the last anomaly of the area on my way back and was disappointed to see it was empty. I left with a single artifact in my bag, and not even a real one, just a perk artifact. Let's hope we have better luck in the other areas. Garbage was already looking much better. I still didn't take some bolts. I guess as long as my armor doesn't get too much damage and I don't get hurt too badly, it should be fine. We took the time to repair and upgrade this armor, so let's get as much as we can for our money, right? Is there an anomaly here? I forgot. Uh, no. We have a good suit, fuck it. Let's just rush it. Ooh, jellyfish, nice. Okay, that's good, we're finding stuff. And we're not destroying our suit too much playing like a moron. <laughs> Beautiful. I finished cleaning up garbage and then stopped by Yentar to buy an artifact melter from Sakharov, but he had nothing apparently. So I looked for the artifacts there and there was actually quite a lot of stuff. There was so many I actually started running out of artifact containers. The Freon module was giving me a slight radiation reduction so I didn't need to buy new containers right now, it will be enough to carry everything back to Rostock. Back in Rostock, I dumped everything, repaired my armors, and went straight back at it. I finished the day looking everywhere in Cordon, but did not find a crazy amount of stuff, just little things here and there. And it was getting late, so I decided to spend the night there. On day 12, I spent literally the whole day hunting for artifacts. 
I did the swamps, dark valley and agroprom from top to bottom, checking absolutely everywhere. Honestly, I don't know what's up with me and artifacts. I think I'm addicted to the beeping of the detector when you find something. And, and it's actually pretty relaxing, some peace in between all the fighting. While walking in the swamps, I remembered that someone told me the other day in the comments that crows have a lot of ammo crafting stuff on them and I wanted to check it out. Oh yeah, okay, so they were not lying. It's actually pretty nice, I had no idea about that. Oh come on, of course he fell on the other side of the fence, Jesus. Spending the whole day artifact hunting has a cost though, especially when you don't take anomaly seriously and you play like a moron. I was in a pretty bad shape. My armor was badly damaged, my helmet too, and my weapons needed repairs. But here's the results of two full days of artifact hunting. <laughs> Honestly, it's not bad. I could, of course, sell them directly to the nerds for quite a small fortune, but I wanted to see which one could be nice to use first. I went to the dock to get patched up, and then I repaired all my gear and organized a little bit all my stashes. And then I had a well-deserved night of sleep. On the morning of day 13, I went to visit Sakharov again to buy an artifact melter from him. It will let me craft and upgrade all the artifacts I looted so far and turn them into something useful. Unfortunately, he had nothing for me again, which was pretty weird because he's supposed to sell it. Mm, I'm not really sure what's happening. Anyways. The plan for today was going to Red Forest and pick up all the stashes there, hoping to get the expert tools, and then I will be moving on to Jupiter. I'll be able to keep going with the main quest there and check the scientists in the bunker if they have the artifact melter for sale. Who knows, we'll see. Red Forest is a crazy place though, and I didn't have enough to craft more ammo, so I had to spend quite a bit to buy some. It made quite a hole in my wallet, but we won't make it through this place without it, so I guess it's a necessary investment. Jesus, look! <laughs> Even the loading screen is teasing me. I knew you can buy the artifact melter from Sakharov. I did it many times before. I don't know why his inventory was empty. The weather was terrible, and it reminded me that the YouTube compression absolutely crushes my video when they are too dark, so let's up a bit the brightness. Come here, we'll see if you can jump me in the back here. Oh, one of my guys is dying, what's up? I can shoot! Woohoo! First camera, okay. The road to Red Forest was proving difficult already. Good things I came prepared. Ah, Red Forest. Shit's getting real. The zone has never been a welcoming place, but there are some areas when you enter them, you know shit is gonna go down, and Red Forest is definitely one of them. See, already proving my point. Okay, let's just check the stashes and try not to get killed. I have to say this place is so creepy though, I, I love it.
things were pretty quiet so far, just your usual moody and creepy zone that we all love. And a lot of disappointing stashes. Holy shit! In a white stash too! Okay, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> oh fuck, this changes everything. I think that's the first time I get the expert tool so easily. In red forest, in a white stash out of all places. I don't even want to know what's the probability of that find. Okay, wait, so sh I should maybe go back to Rostock and upgrade my gear straight away, right? I wasn't sure what to do. I had so many gear upgrades waiting for me in Rostock now that I had the tools. In the end, I decided to finish at least what I was set to do. Let's finish cleaning up the place, go to Jupiter for the main quest, and we'll hire a guide back to Rostock after that. Okay, we're entering the area of Red Forest where there's way more stalkers than mutants, so let's switch to the AP rounds. Actually, it's probably gonna be Monolith or Sin or something, like very good gear, guys. Let's be safe and just like, I'm gonna pop up some morphine. Yep, monolith. And a tanky boy scene, called it. I was using hip as a literal meat shield and it made cleaning up the place pretty easy. I finished cleaning up and looting the place and moved to Jupiter. Well, I was stopped by the biggest threat in the zone, the mighty game crash. I launched my game again and crashed again. So I updated my game files, just in case, and still crash. So I did a complete clean installation, which took me a full day with my crappy internet connection, and crash again. Jesus Christ. Updating my files didn't work, doing a clean install didn't work, so I was starting to get worried. But I realized that I could start a new game with no issues, so I decided to go back in time trying my older save, it was probably like one of my saves that was corrupted or something. And after a lot of trial and error and a lot of crashes, it looked like my save just before I went artifact hunting was working. So it wasn't too bad, I basically lost two days of artifact hunting, which honestly could be worse. So the plan was to gear back up and go straight to Red Forest, check if the stash still had the expert tools and then push to Jupiter. I was hoping the tools were there and that we won't get no more new crashes. Okay, let's do this. I definitely had lost quite a bit of progression, but as long as we have no more crashes, honestly I'm fine with it. Let's hope it goes well. I don't remember what I had, but I definitely lost a lot of the good gear I found to upgrade, so it was time to refill our stashes. And we'll go artifact hunting again later, it's okay. Okay, moment of truth. Do I still have the tools there? Yes! Okay, good. Let's keep going. I'm not going to show you the same fight again, I just cleaned Red Forest one more time, and now we're here for the second moment of truth. Can we make it to Jupiter? Oh, that doesn't look good. Fuck, no, please! Come on. Well, there was no error, right? So, I don't know, let's try again.
Okay, please, 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 Grok, please, Gamma Gods, let me through. Okay, we made it. Jesus Christ, okay, good. Whew. Let's go to Yanov Station. <laughs> Come on, we didn't lose this run. No. There definitely was some crazy stuff happening in the distance, but eh, I wasn't feeling too curious at the moment. The trip to the station was pretty uneventful. I went to see Loki, who gave me a crazy like mission, a find 3 MP5s, which will be quite the task in Gamma. More well, I had one already, that. so we'll see how hard it is to get two more. Then I quickly went to see the nerds. Okay, I can see you guys are having a party. They were selling the artifact melter, so I bought it straight away. Even though I had no more artifacts at the moment. And now we have to decide what we do next. After some thinking, I decided to hire the guide to go back to Rostock. Now that I had the expert tools, I needed to check if I can get some gear upgrades. And we'll go to Radar to do the Brain Scorcher run after that. With some luck, we might even get the MP5s we need, because we were about to kill a lot of monoliths there. I spent a good while ordering my inventory, and started checking the upgrades I could make now that I had the expert tools. Better night vision, better backpack. I bought and learned the recipes I was missing, which made quite a hole in my wallet again. In terms of armor, I had some big upgrades waiting for me. I decided to go with the hybrid armored suit and the Spartan helmet, which were by far the best iPhone so far. For the weapons, honestly I didn't have anything exciting, so I decided to stick with what I already have. I had to visit a couple technicians and sell a lot of my stuff to get the money to buy everything I needed to craft a heavy repair kit and an exo repair kit. But it made me clean all the junk in my inventory I was hoarding, which is not a bad thing. Oh, and Sakharov was selling the artifact melter now. There was definitely something weird with my previous game. Good thing I did a fresh install in the end, I guess. It cost me quite a bit, but in the end I managed to gather everything I needed to craft the heavy repair kit and the exoskeleton repair kit. And I repaired my new armors with them. I upgraded them fully using everything I had left to craft the upgrade kits, and we were done! I finished the day disassembling all the ammo I didn't need to craft some AP runs for my AK. I know some of them was giving me parts I didn't need, I could have sold some instead, but I, I was too lazy to check. Just disassemble everything and see what I can craft. I woke up on day 14, ready to go to Radar for the Brain Scorcher run. I had my brand new armors, plenty of ammo and medicine, and we're not playing Iron Man, so I was actually pretty excited and not scared for once to do it. Okay, let's do this. I generally cut through the woods on my radar runs, I'd rather fight a couple mutants than all the monolith soldiers along the road. But today we can afford to die, and I need to loot some MP5, so the more people we kill the better, so let's follow the road. I'm wondering if there's a solo giant here, I I'm gonna tell my guys to stay behind just in case. Okay, just a controller. Eh, we good.
I can't believe my dumb dumb companion walked right in my line of fire. Damn, he got delayed. <laughs> and Chunky Boy here is so tanky, Jesus Christ. Okay, we, we are not off to the best start. After a pretty rocky start, things progress pretty smoothly with me slowly cleaning all the monoliths in our way without taking too much damage. The place was actually feeling a little bit empty, with way less resistance than I was expecting. With the help of hip, we cleaned the whole place pretty easily. We're only gonna meet mutants on the first phase, so let's switch to HP runs and run for it. Okay, done. Now let's get out of here. I made it out without too many issues, and now it was time to loot everybody. It took quite some time to order all the loot I got and required 3 trips to bring back everything back to Rostock. But we were done! And on top of progressing the main questline, we had a ton of new goodies. Only sad thing is I only got one MP5 and it wasn't even the right kind. This quest will be very hard to complete in Gamma. I checked the time and it was only 12. After restocking my inventory and repairing everything, I should still have plenty of time to move to Zaton. I crafted myself a Zvarok detector. I lost two days of artifact hunting in the save rollback, so it was time to slowly accumulate again. And I wanted to try different weapons, even if on paper they're not really the cookie cutter ones, but just because they look cool. I think that's a good criteria. I had enough to craft an advanced repair kit right away for them, and I had plenty of parts, so bonus point as it wouldn't cost me anything to repair them. I had very little ammo for this new main weapon, and literally just one scope for it. But I guess it's good enough for now. Zaton was a long road away, so I'll still bring my AK with me to be safe. Darmas, darmas. I had everything I needed, so I left. We had a couple hours at least to get to Jupiter before night falls. It should be alright. 
And I need to keep an eye out for free stalkers I meet to see if I can hire them, because after our little accident in radar, I needed new companions. I slowly made my way through Red Forest, trying out my new tactical guns that proved to be very effective, I have to say, and picking up all the artifacts I could find on the way. While checking anomalies, I met this lone stalker, Master Rank, Exoskeleton, and available as a companion. It was a match made in heaven, Jesus Christ, perfect. We found a new companion. Actually, I need to find a good handgun or like a good small machine gun I can hold with my detector. That would be nice. I decided to clean the mine while I was here. Sin boys always have great loot and I could test my new gun in real condition. Conclusion, it truly packs a punch, especially with AP runs, but damn, the, the, the recoil is pretty nasty. The rest of the road was pretty quiet. Well, I got killed by a very unfortunate lag spike. I mean, Let's look at it again. First, this camera is sounding and acting super weird, but I get a big freeze literally at the worst time. And after the first hit, I can't move anymore. If it was Iron Man, I would have been mad to die like this, but yeah, anyways. I made it to Yanov Station at around 5 pm. I still had plenty of time, so I decided to keep going to reach Zaton before the night. I of course had to clean the mercenaries on the way. It started okay, but turned into a very messy fight quickly. And of course, an emission hit right in the middle of the fight. It ended up fine, but I took quite a bit of damage, and it cost me a good chunk of meds and repair kits to get back in shape. The way to the barge was pretty uneventful, but it was getting dark, so I couldn't wait to get there. I went straight to Bird to progress the main questline, then I talked to Rogue. Next step was going back to Jupiter, but he will have to wait for tomorrow. Let's clean up our loot first and get some sleep. The plan for day 15 was pretty easy. Go get the secret weapon for the mission, pick up artifacts, and kill everything that stands in our way. Pretty simple stuff. Stalker AI, never change.
This is not creepy at all. Let, let's move slowly so they cannot spot us. Okay, here we go. I'm not really interested in visiting the place, so let's just go back. Ooh, nice! Lobster eyes! I don't have any containers anymore, though. I mean, I, I can carry one or two without protection, because like the like with my attachments, that reduces a little bit the radiation. But I, I'm gonna need to get more containers at some point. I brought back the gun to Rogue and decided to keep going with the missions. My inventory and those of my companions were getting full, but I still had plenty of food and medicine, so we should be fine. I just needed some extra artifacts, containers, and some ammo. I bought them without looking too much at the price, and let's say it basically cost me all the money I had left. But anyways, we were headed to Jupiter Underground. There shouldn't be anything crazy done there. I think we should be fine. The road to Jupiter Underground was pretty easy, and I had a pretty good backup if anything serious happened anyway. Like, look at them. I got the Dream Team. There was only one sin boy guarding the entrance, so let's say the door was wide open. And he gave me a nice heavy machine gun that I could give to my new companion. We had two heavy healers in the team now. Holy shit, did he just slap this snork mid-air out of existence and saved me? <laughs> I need to replay this in slow-mo after. And yes, yes he did. Oh come on, you guys are trolling me, just moving when I throw the grenade, Jesus. That's a lot of dead snorks. This is not suspicious at all. Oh yeah, someone's hiding. It's definitely an ambush. much easier than expected. Ooh, what's that gun? I, I don't think I ever saw that gun. Right. I looted everybody, picked up the documents at the top just in case. Nobody asked for them so far, but you never know. I don't want to come back here if I have to. And we just kept going. The rest of the trip was creepy, but pretty quiet.
And just like that, we arrived at the outskirts. It was nice to see the light of day again. We arrived at the laundromat, and I finally met the famous and very elusive Stradock. He didn't lose any time, and he was already sending me on a mission in an underground lab. Okay, we'll see about that. I picked up some extra missions, talked to the guide to see if he could bring me back to Rostock, but no, unfortunately, so we're gonna have to walk back there. I was way too full and too low on ammo to keep going right now, we had to go back to base and restock before starting anything new. My companions and myself were overloaded with loot, so I had to dump everything at base, repair my gear and restock before progressing with the main quest and all the Strelok stuff. I was of course picking up all the stashes on my way, but to be fair was not really necessary, I had more than enough to finish the game comfortably. The road back to Rostock took a long time, which actually got me thinking. Honestly, things had to change. I've been a loot goblin for far too long, picking up loot everywhere, spending so much time organizing everything, mostly for things I will never use. So, like an alcoholic throwing all the bottles at home, I decided to get rid of all my loot. Well, not in a dumb way of course, I was not gonna throw everything away. I would repair, craft and upgrade everything I needed first, but the goal at the end was to leave Rostock with what I could carry with me, nothing more. No more stashes, no more boxes, no more base in Rostock, all the extra stuff was getting sold. We were packing, taking everything we could carry and moving north of the zone for good. I started by disassembling all the armors I had for parts. Maybe I will upgrade to the Nosorog I found earlier at some point, or just stick to my hybrid suit for now, we'll see. But everything else I had saved was useless, so I got rid of it. In terms of weapons, I wanted the Ash-12 as my new shotgun, and to be fair, you're not really playing Stalker if you don't rock a VSS Vintores or an equivalent like the Ice Val at some point, so we'll repair one of those. The Hera look nice, so I'll give it to Hip, and a PKM for Gigachad would be perfectly fine. I then repaired and upgraded everything. Crafted everything I could, medicine, ammo, repair kits, honestly, anything that could be useful. And then I sold all the leftovers. We were getting rid of everything. I was checking a crafting chart for the good OP artifacts to use as attachments, but unfortunately I was far from having enough to craft them. So this will be the only stash I'm gonna keep and leave here, I won't sell them to ecologists, just in case I decide to go artifact hunting again in the future. I'm gonna spare you all the details, but I spent the rest of the day after that selling everything I had. The traders in Rostock were not giving me the best prices for everything, but honestly I didn't really care, I just wanted to get rid of everything. Companions tend to damage their weapons very quickly, so I upgraded the durability of the guns I saved for them, we'll see if it helps. And I had plenty of money with everything I sold, so I bought the upgrade kit for my VSS. <laughs> nice. On the morning of day 17, I was ready to go. I checked my stashes one last time to make sure I wasn't forgetting anything, everything was clean. My companions were carrying their brand new weapons and some extra stuff I didn't have room for. My inventory was full, all my good weapons, repair stuff, medicine, food and ammo, all the basic necessities to progress the main quest, but nothing more. Rostock had been our main base of operation since the beginning of this playthrough, so it was kind of an important moment, that was the last time we were seeing Rostock. We were moving north and not looking back. I decided to go back to the outskirts through radar, we cleared the way recently, so the trip should be pretty easy. A couple of monoliths had respawned, but nothing I couldn't handle. Back in outskirts, I dumped everything in that stash. It's gonna be our base of operations, at least for now. I then started looking at the missions I had to do. Killing a solo giant was the first thing on the list. After cleaning the way, we were getting closer to the solo giant. It was a mess of monolith soldiers, poltergeist and other mutants on top of the soda giant we had to kill. I want to get rid of the monolith boy first because they're gonna shoot me in the back.
Okay, that can be sense. But the fight went pretty alright. Solo Giant are real companion killers, so it's always a bit unnerving, but everything went fine. And I got a Swiss knife as a reward. <laughs> totally worth it. Okay, it was time now to get to Lab X8. And it was the perfect opportunity to try out our new VSS and the Ash-12. Oh, look at this bad boy. Okay, we got everything we need. Eh, nothing interesting. Okay, we're here. I'm gonna leave you guys behind for now. Like, we're gonna fight in small hallways like it's a nightmare with companions. Like, we're gonna walk over each other. I'm just gonna stay here. I told you guys not to come, Jesus, hip! Get the fuck out of here! I know I said no more being a loot goblin, but hey, just in case, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm gonna have enough ammo to finish everything. Well, see, I'm, I'm just looting to be safe. Oh fuck, I forgot to reload. <laughs> <sighs> oh, damn, homeboy destroyed me. Let me check if he's not sneaking on me while I heal. And of course an emission.
one of those if wars come to it and I don't find Shepard in time. Like, we fine. Elevator is on. Let's go back now. See, I'm trying not to look too much. <laughs> Okay, boys, let's go. Not sure you're gonna be useful down there, but eh, we'll see. Ah, what a welcoming sound. So happy to be here. Okay, you guys are gonna stay here. You're already freaking out. Like, you're gonna be useless. Okay, technically we could leave right now. If it was Iron Man, that, that's what I would do, but okay, l let's see what we can find down here. Actually, no, I changed my mind. This place sucks. Let's get out of here. Okay, let's go, boys. Yeah, useless. Yeah, the hitbox on these things is always a nightmare. Okay, Strelok, what else do you have for me now? Well, getting rid of some monolith. Okay, easy enough. With a new toy too, that's gonna be nice. Let me just restock and let's go. Okay, we got everything. Let's go, boys. Shooting some monolith. Uh, 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 shooting some monolith. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, shit, what? I'm missing everything! What the fuck? Leave me alone! This guy wanted me so bad! Okay, fine, I'm useless. My like, boys, do the work for me. Thank you.
Well, that was a mess. <laughs> I hope it's gonna go better after that. Okay, let's go to Pripyat. Things didn't go super smooth so far, so let's get juiced before the fight, just in case. Okay, you guys are ready? Shit's gonna get real, real fast. The first shot of this gun always misses. I don't know if it's a bug of I'm doing something wrong, like, Jesus. After cleaning the area a bit around us, I decided to leave my guys behind and climb inside the buildings to have a better and safer point of view on the Monolith HQ. Whoa, 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 <laughs> what the fuck? I think this is the first time it happens to me. Clean headshot. From full life, fully upgraded armor and morphine boost and everything, 100 to 1 in one good headshot. Well played, Mr. Monolith. That, that was a clean one. After this little mishap, I started cleaning the place without too many issues. Wait, is, is someone sneaking on me? I can hear some steps. Ah, eh, okay, no, just a clueless guy. Hey, Dolan, where are you? Where are you? Show yourself. Okay, nobody's coming anymore. We will have to go look for them. I'm a bit too trigger happy, I'm wasting so much ammo. Oh that seem, fuck! Oh that was clean. I can headshot too you rock licking bitch. <laughs> We're in the end game and I'm still using the basic medkit. <laughs> I'm so cheap. Okay, let's finish cleaning up the place while we're here.
Come on, stop camping. Sissies. <laughs> that was cold. Oh, 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 he almost got me, sneaky bastard. Russ Machine. Well played, my friend. Cool name, too. I finished cleaning the place, I spent some time looting everything, and I went back to see Strelok. Next step was going to the power plant and finding the wish granter. I decided to go back to the laundromat first to pick up all my gear and we'll set up camp in Zaton before we start our very last mission. I made it back to the barge just as the night was coming. It was time to get a good night of sleep because tomorrow will be a big day. I woke up on the morning of day 18, had a quick breakfast, and it was no time to gear up. It was the perfect opportunity to try the Nosorok suit I fully repaired and upgraded before. For weapons, we'll use the Ghost Rifle, of course, my trusty VSS, and honestly it should be enough, with plenty of grenades, of course. Actually, let me grab the shotgun just in case. I'm not swimming in ammo for my two other weapons, so eh, you never know. Medicine, food, some basic stuff to repair my gear... Yeah, okay, we're ready. Okay, I got the batteries for my suit. Actually, I might use NVGs quite a bit. Let's grab some extra batteries just in case. Okay, we're good. Come on, my little army. We're gonna achieve great things today. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's the cave boy. We could just skip him, but hey, let's go. Get touched by one more phantom, I'm dead. I feel so sluggish in the exosuit. I really don't like not being like super mobile. We are off to a rough start again. <laughs> it's okay, it's gonna be fine. Okay, it's just me hearing voices. Okay, let's go. Here we are. Nice, looks like we are having a free diversion to get closer. Uh, let's use a little bit the big gun. Let's have some fun. See you!
Having a small army definitely helps. <laughs> I bet there's still some of them hiding. Bingo! Damn, I missed everything. Okay, let's heal, let's get juiced. Actually, you guys are gonna stay here. I'm gonna do that by myself. Let me clear my inventory quickly. Okay, let me use my best ones. I've been saving them exactly for this occasion. There's like no reason not to use them. Давай, давай, давай! Damn, that's a lot of footsteps. Jesus. I'm not used of having them all come to me like that. This is actually a first. It might not be the most entertaining thing, but like I'm playing a little bit the way I play in Iron Man, like very slow, <laughs> using cover, not taking too many risks. Like we have time, we don't want to die. <laughs> There is no rush. Uh, let me heal quickly. Пришло время. Я вижу твое желание. I might have some ammo issues soon, actually. Let's use a bit the big gun. And be very careful not to waste any ammo. Hey, No, как там тебе? Ты There's probably a couple hiding in the back, yeah? Я 
вижу твое желание. Okay, I'm missing all my shots. I cannot afford to miss to uh, to waste my ghost ammo. Jesus Christ! Okay, we're almost there. Come to me, little monolith! Come to me! Stop hiding, you little rat! Oh, 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 nice! This stairs part. Can we get done with this? Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming for you, don't worry. Твоя цель здесь. Okay, we are done with this part, at least. After cleaning the first floor, I took the time to loot all the interesting stuff, then take a break to repair all my gear and completely heal. My ammo situation was not the best, I'll have to be very careful if I want to get out of here alive. I know there are still some of them hiding around, but eh, let's go say hi to the big rock before. Твоя цель здесь. Иди ко мне. Hey there! Just here to grab a screenshot for the thumbnail of my video. Don't mind me. <laughs> okay, bye. I have plenty of grenades, boys. Come on, get out. Knock, knock, bitches. Fine, I'll come. Oh, shit, <laughs> that's a lot. Save ammo. How tanky are you? <laughs> With your bloody face. What the fuck? Oh, my grenades actually did the work. Nice. 
Okay, I'm gonna tell my companions to come. Maybe with some luck they'll teleport me when I change to the next level. Are you really camping in a corner with a sniper? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Ah, no, come on, they didn't follow. Shit. Okay, I'm by myself. Okay, we'll see. Yeah, we should have enough. Ah, it's gonna be alright. We just need to be careful not to waste too much. Okay, let's get this monolith shard and let's get the hell out of here. Actually, let me favorite the ammo so I can keep track of everything very, very easily like this, yeah. Friendly Well, that was embarrassing. Of course the last guy has to be a pain in the ass. 64 and I still have 10 in the ghost. Okay. And still using the cheap medkit. <laughs> okay, we're progressing.
I still had to go through the last rooms, but the fight was dying down, so I started looting to see if I could find some extra ammo and resources. After looting everybody, I didn't find anything interesting. I was hoping for a ammo craft kit, but no. And not a single useful bullet. I didn't want to use a broken down weapon I found on a body, so we'll have to make what we have left work. Thank God for grenades, that's good. I know I'm missing most of my shots, but firing from the hip with this gun is like <laughs> my favorite thing. Hip? What the fuck? You're showing up now? Seriously? You are useless. You are a glorified backpack. magazine. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm looting. I'm done. Let's let's get out of here. Of course we have the family reunion now. <laughs> okay, Strelok, talk to me. Amazing. Well hip, Chad, thank you for your service. At this point, I could go back to Sidorovich to report, and then technically we could start the Unisig and the Operation Afterglow questline. But now, I'm done. We've finished the main thing. I need a break. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.